Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, I'm helping everybody's having a good morning so far. And today I'm going to do my novel project presentation for Dr. Swanberg for Critical Reading 114. All right, and my book today is called Deliverance by James Dickey, and it was written in 1970. And this novel is extremely impressive artwork to me, in my opinion. And it was named in top 100 lists of English language books. The author, James Dickey, based it off of an incident he had when he went canoeing with the Kahusawati River. And James Dickey was also an uh, <laughs> avid canoeer. This story is about four men who were bored with their everyday lives and they decided to go on a camping trip or a canoeing trip in the North Georgia woods for the weekend. The trip starts off like to a really good start, but then it turns sour like quick. <laughs> and this story is a quest for survival, strength, and hope. And basically... You see the pictures down at the very bottom. They're all of Jane Sticky, and right in the middle, he was playing um, Sheriff Bullard in the actual movie. So he had an actual part in his book. <laughs> <laughs> all right, in chapter one, this one is called "Before," and four friends named Ed, Drew. Lewis and Bobby were at a bar, and Lewis brings up a canoeing trip for the weekend. And Lewis found out that, you know, the river was going to be turned into, well, it wasn't going to be there anymore. So he decided that, hey, let's go ahead and head to the river before it's gone. And basically, Ed is like the main character, and he's the one narrating the entire story. And he basically broke down all of his friends the very first chapter. And Ed is pretty much a graphic artist and has a wife named Martha and a son named Dean. And Lewis is a hunter and a housing landlord. And he was modeled as like the leader of the group. Because he's the one that came up with the actual trip. And Bobby is a salesman. And is usually he has like a sarcastic sense of humor. You can tell in the book he says it pretty often and Drew is like a soft drink distributor and he's like very quiet more into his guitar and his family and Ed is hesitant about you know going on the trip at first but you know eventually Lewis talked him into it so they went <laughs> and Ed and Lewis were like the closest out of all four of the men and he always seen Lewis as like a role model because of his strength and his leadership and everyone obviously decides to go with Lewis on the trip but with one exception and they request to bring one item Bobby wants to bring liquor Ed wants to bring his bow and arrows and Drew wants to bring his guitar and Ed decides to head back to the farm right after you know their little meeting at the bar to finish the Kid and Bridges photo shoot and the firm he works at is an advertising firm. He's a co-owner co -owner with it, with this guy named Thad. And he mentions the model with nothing but clothing lines, underwear on, and holding a cat. And he says that her eyes were like a golden glow, and she changed from being a young girl to womanhood in the matter of, wait, less than a minute. So, by her dropping off, you know, doing the clothing line photo shoot he's seen that as being from one stage to the next all right chapter two september 14. ed wakes up to his wife and they have sex before lewis picks him up and lewis arrives and they head to the wilderness ed and ed and lewis they basically, you know, have like a little philosophy conversation talking about sliding. And Ed, when, when Ed says sliding, he's talking about like life period. And they arrive to Ulrich 
to meet with Drew and Bobby, and the next stop they get to a gas station to pump gas and to have someone drive their cars to entry, so when they arrive, they'll be there for them. Drew meets this albino boy with a banjo, and Drew brings out his guitar and play with him. They have a duet, which is known as the Dueling Banjos, and Drew realizes that the boy is musically gifted. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, you may have heard the song. Like, you may have heard, like, the, the banjos and the... You might have... I'm pretty sure everyone's probably heard the song. And if you haven't, I'm going to preview it for you so you'll be able to know what it sounds like. brothers garage to ask for someone to drop off the cars one of the brothers who's working inside of the garage he's hesitant to achieve the test and the conversation becomes really hostile like quick and Louis has to negotiate a price to have them delivered Grainer wonders why they would want to visit the river anyway because he says but I don't believe I'd go there if I were you so the four men arrive to the river and enjoy a good evening of family, and they find a resting place and set up camp. Chapter 3, September 15. This is the juicy chapters. Like, after this... <laughs> so the next morning, Ed wakes up and spots the deer, and he gets his bow and arrow out to try to shoot the deer, but he misses, and he... Obviously gets frustrated and he tells Lewis about it and Lewis tells him, well, next time, no, don't think about me. Think about the deer. When Ed tells him that his old steady buddy exploded and Bobby complains about the conditions of the trip, like the food and the tents, and Ed takes on Bobby as a partner instead of Lewis to avoid conflict. Everyone goes to the canoes and starts heading down the river. Later during the padding, paddling, Ed and Bobby take a break near the woods. Worst decision they could have did. Two men with a shotgun ambush them both. Ed is tightly tied up to the tree like a pitch on the left. And Bobby is raped by one of the men like a pitch on the right. Both men walk towards Ed and one attacks him. The other man tells Ed, fall down on your knees and pray, boy. And you better pray good. About to rape Ed. At this exact moment, Lewis shoots Bobby's rapist in the back through the, his chest, killing him. And Ed wrestles with the other mountain man, but he flees. And Lewis, Drew, Ed, and Bobby have a heated argument on what to do with the body. Lewis and Bobby wants to bury the body, but Drew want, opposes it, and he'd rather take it to the authorities to talk about it. But Lewis tells him, hey, that's not going to work. So they bury the man. Because Ed obviously sides with Lewis, and um, Lewis and Bobby falls out. Well, they have to go ahead and get out of the situation, so you know they wouldn't get in trouble. And basically, um, Drew gets shot in the canoe going down the river to get away from the situation, and the other canoe is the one with Lewis and Bobby in it and they end up falling out and Lewis breaks his leg and Ed goes after the man that you know may have shot Drew. <laughs> right so chapter 4 September 16th the next morning uh basically Ed finds the man and he shoots him as long as the, uh, the man shoots back at Ed too but it misses Ed but yet Ed falls on one of his arrows falling and he kills the man but you know to his horror he looks he looks to see if the man is the toothless man that's the one that 
was at the um the raping of Bobby, and he realizes that the man has a set of dentures in his mouth, so he's not sure if that's the man or not. So he brings the well, he falls off the cliff into the river, and the man falls with him, but instead his face hits. A rock so it disfigures his face so Bobby won't be able to tell if it's him or not and they head back down to the river to go to entry so they can go ahead and get some help and they find Drew's body and they sink Bobby this not sink Bobby they sink Drew <laughs> and they arrive to entry to tell law enforcement about it and they get the help they need you know and the sheriff, he's kind of hesitant about it anyway. He's like, mm, I don't know about that. So, after they still are trying to find Drew's body, they go ahead and let him go because it's it's just, it took them too long to look for him. So, they told, the sheriff told him to never come back to Antry because if they do, might be some consequences. <laughs> and last chapter, chapter five. Ed's back home with his family. Lewis is, um, he has a permanent limp now. And Bobby supposedly moves to Hawaii. So basically, Ed says at the end, you know, he still has like this um, connection with the river. And he buys a cabin with Martha. And he's basically just trying to get back to his normal life. was made into a movie two years later, as you can tell the pictures I put on the presentation. And this movie is it's it's very relevant to popular culture nowadays because the main idea was to follow your first mind, to learn how to survive and to know how to fight and this book, if you really want action and drama and people trying to survive read this book because it is very interesting and i would have never you know thought this book would be something of that sort but it's a really good book and i'm pretty sure everybody would like enjoy it because i enjoyed it <laughs> so i would think you know it's a pretty good it's I, I would recommend it to everybody. So try reading it. You know, get you something new to read. <laughs> Alright. That is all folks. So i I hope you all enjoy my presentation and I hope you all would have a really good rest of the day and good luck on your future endeavors.